October 29th. We got a good dusting last night. Guys, I can show you how to calibrate this particular DRO. And we're looking at the uh, brain box of this thing. And uh, on the face of it on the lower left, you can see it says 3Y. But more importantly, if you look at the keyboard pattern with the colors and the, and the layout, if your DRO looks like that, it's probably the same one. I believe that these are brand labeled under different uh, logos. So there's probably not that many manufacturers that have this exact design. So this may be helpful to you and we'll take an attempt at calibrating this. I think I've got it worked out and I'll show you how I'm doing mine. What I've got is a gauge block, four inch gauge block set up on top of my vise and it's just sitting there. I've got a one, two, three block in there just to uh, be able to square the gauge block up and on the four inch gauge block on the back of it I've with a ring fit I've attached another small gauge block just as a uh, reference surface or indicating surface. So the first thing we'll do is we'll come down and we'll zero out our indicator on the face of the four inch gauge block. Okay, that's as close as I can get it. So check it for repeatability again. Coming right back to zero. Okay, now I lift up my indicator and zero out my DRO. Now I come back and catch a zero on this small gauge block. Now, we've moved our table exactly four inches. Well, as close as that gauge block is, uh, probably within 50 millionths or so. And we have a reading on our Y of 3.9992. So, that's eight tenths of a thousandths off. So now we have to do a little bit of math and we'll get a factor to put into the DRO that will allow it to compensate. So on my DRO, here's how I arrive at a uh, compensation factor to plug into the, into the box. So we have <coughs> the gauge block. minus the DRO reading so remember we we had a four inch gauge block in there and we zeroed out on the first face of the gauge block and then we traveled all the way to the end of the gauge block and zeroed out so we knew we had an exact travel of four inches and then we checked the reading on the DRO so this value will be divided by the gauge block which was four inches, divided by 1,000. And this is the comp factor. Equals. 
So setting this problem up, we have gauge block of four inches minus the DRO reading, which we got 3.9994. I'm going to divide that by the gauge block, which is four divided by 1,000. So let me get my calculator out here. So we got, uh, we know that this is going to be four tenths of a thousandth of an inch. So we got zero, 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 four divided by four divided by. Point zero zero four, and that's going to equal. I'll do this on a calculator because I don't want to screw the zeros up. Divided by four. Divided by. We've got a comp factor to put into the DRO of point one. Now let's go over to the DRO and see how to enter that in. Now we select the Y axis. Oh, wait a minute, let's, let's start here. Okay. Okay, to, to put that factor of 0.1 in the DRO, we select the Y axis, which is this one, and the screen goes blank. Then we key the M slash 1 key which is down here. But we have to get we have to get a display up here of uh, COPEN uh, under space Y. So we'll go down okay COPEN under space Y. Now we should be able to put our factor in First of all, we have to put a zero in. So here's the zero. Then a point one. And then enter. So now let's check and see if we have that compensation in there. Okay, we come down and catch a zero on our indicator. And that looks pretty good, zero. Check it for repeatability. Zero, a DRO out. And if everything's perfect, when we move four inches on the DRO, we can catch a zero on our indicator. Okay, there's zero. And our DRO says And the DRO says four inches. So we'll go back and double check that. Okay, the DRO is saying Boy, that's hard to zero on the Okay, we come down gently. 
and we have zero. So it looks like it took our compensation. I'm happy with that. And there's different kinds of uh, linear compensations. There's linear segmented, there's nonlinear segmented, and then there's just simple linear, which is what we did, which is good enough for Bridgeport. If this was a, uh, a large boring mill, or let's say a uh, jig bore, uh, we would probably uh, do the uh, non-linear -lin uh, segmented uh, method, which is a, lot, a little bit more complicated, but this is good enough for us, and we'll call this done. So that's it for this video. And I'm ready to use these, this uh, DRO on this bridge port on projects. And uh, I hope you got something out of this. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. This is Mike signing out.